The Mojave Desert, a 50,000 mile chunk of hostile, arid terrain with 10,000 foot mountains and temperatures that range from 15 to 134 degrees. Seismically active and prone to earthquakes, it receives on average less than two inches of rain per year, making it one of the harshest climates on the planet. Nestled within her fiery foothills lies Las Vegas, Sin City, the entertainment capital of the world, a city that gave birth to the Rat Pack, the modern mega resort, and one of the most celebrated races in history. 52 years ago, the Las Vegas Mint Hotel held the inaugural Mint 400 Rally, which not only gave rise to modern off-road endurance racing, it went on to draw top race car drivers, celebrities, and international press from all over the world. For over five decades, men and women from every walk of life and every background have met on this desolate and punishing battlefield in one of the longest running and most prestigious motorsports races on the planet. This year, Mint 400 owners Josh and Matt Martelli have attracted over 500 race teams in a record 83 classes to compete on a newly designed Tony Vanillo race course. A 100 mile nightmare of thick silt, crushing stone, jagged cactus, and massive ruts. Most will attempt four treacherous laps, making up 400 punishing miles. But less than half of them will finish. The mid 400 pulls no punches. It is the reigning heavyweight of off road racing. To win here, your race must be flawless. This is the Great American Off-Road Race. This is the BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400, right now on the World of X Games. Qualifying for start position in any race is a key ingredient to landing on the podium. At the Mint 400, it's nearly impossible to come from behind and win. It's far better to go hard at qualifying and start with a fighting chance than to hope for a miracle from the back of the pack. 2020 Mint 400, this is qualifying. We're on the, the backside of Apex. Um, we got Nellis Orfritz right down here. We got Las Vegas, um, my hometown, born and raised here. I'm super excited to be here. This year, the Mint welcomed a new class to the 8th Annual Method Race Wheels Time Trials, the Baja Trucks. Second only in size and speed to their unlimited big brothers, this was their first year competing at the storied race. Race director Tony Vanillo lined the racers up and prepared them for their five-mile timed sprint. In the new Baja truck class, there were 16 qualifiers this year many of whom were 20 and 30 year veterans in the sport. Brad Lovell stood out early on during his run. He raced out front with a time of 4.38. He was followed closely by Rafael Navarro, and then it was young Pierce Herbst racing for terrible Herbst Motorsports. Then in the back of the pack, number 254 Joe Brain with Tosh Motorsports shocked the field when he came ripping through at light speed. He put down an incredible time of 4.32, ended up six seconds ahead of second and took the pole. Next up, it was the fire-breathing dragons in the unlimited class, and some familiar names came through hot. Tim Herbst in the number 19 truck looked strong, as did Steve Oligas in the number 27 Team Ford truck. A few minutes later, young Christian Serapis came screaming through in his number 88 Mason all-wheel drive truck. He looked poised and determined, but was a few seconds off the lead time. Then it was Ryan Arciero in the number 32 C-SPAN Levi's truck. Ryan was on fire. He tore down the race course and landed with a 417, propelling him to near the front of the pack. But his lead was short-lived. Bryce Menzies, a two-time Mint 400 champion, came rocketing through next. Bryce was also in a brand new all-wheel drive Mason truck and was clearly putting all four tires to work. 
He wheeled his way into first place with a time of 4.08. One by one, the racers each took their turns ripping across the destructive course. Then, out of the dust emerged Harley Lettner in the number 70 concrete motorsports truck of Kevin Thompson. Lettner drove like a man possessed, at one point driving into the dirt and ripping the hood open. He flogged the truck hard and ended up crossing the finish a mere six-tenths of a second ahead of Bryce to move into first. Honorable mentions include Sarah Price, who was driving the Chattanooga whiskey truck, number 100 Dale Dondell, and number 127 Kyle Jurgensen, who was a late entry and ended up second fastest on the day. Rob McEachern, meanwhile, another living off-road legend and mid-400 champion, was forced to run a second time because of a damaged truck on course for his first run. He put down a 418, which was good enough for eight. Not quite the speed he had hoped for, but still a very dangerous spot for his competition. Here's a look at all the results for the 2020 Mint 400 Method Race Wheels time trials. 2020 kicked off with the 8th Annual Republic Services Mint 400 Vehicle Parade. 150 race vehicles and motorcycles took over the Las Vegas Strip. Over $30 million worth of off-road machinery growled past the huge Las Vegas crowds. The next day, the spectacular two-day Mint 400 off-road festival saw nearly 300 exhibitors and vendors pack the streets of Fremont East for one of the biggest and baddest off-road showcases on the planet. Later that evening, the 9th Annual Amsoil Pit Crew Challenge. Unlimited trucks and the smaller but equally ferocious Baja truck teams went toe-to-toe -to -toe for bragging rights and thousands of dollars in cash and prizes from Amsoil. Each team had to change two massive BF Goodrich tires and return to their pit boxes with no loose lug nuts. Householder Motorsports edged out the competition and took their third title in a row. In the Unlimited class, the crowd went wild as Reddy Gunner took the win and became the undisputed Amsoil Pit Crew Challenge champion. After the Pit Crew Challenge, the headlining act, Palm Desert Rockers, the Eagles of Death Metal, delivered over 90 minutes of soul-infused, down-home, biblical rock and roll. Day two of the Mid 400 Off-Road Festival saw an even bigger turnout as the rest of the 500 racers pushed through crowded Fremont Street. It was yet another record-setting year for the great American off-road race. Friday, March 6th, 6 a.m. For only the 10th time in history, nearly 200 two-wheeled warriors lined up row by row, ready to face off at the 52nd annual Mint 400. Among the group, some of the top NHHA racers on the planet, the Southwest's most seasoned desert navigators. Race director Tony Vanillo gave the go-ahead. The pro, pro 250, and pro women's classes blasted off first. Dalton Shirey from Acton, California took the whole shot. He was followed closely by David Camel. Cole Knatzer, meanwhile, leapt out front in the 250 class, and Tara Geiger looked strong on her Honda in women's. Up next, it was the 251 class, the veterans, and the team open experts. The pack ripped quickly through the moto infield, going elbow to elbow through the turns. Then, row by row, the rest of the motorcycle classes all tore off the start and headed out towards the desert. The last classes to leave were the all-new Hooligan Enduro and Hooligan Open classes. For these ragtag street bike crossover racers, it was gonna be a long day of racing. In the pro class, Dalton Shirey remained out front ahead of David Camo. Meanwhile, number 17 Jack Simpson and number 2 Joseph Wasson began battling for third place right off the bat. Shirey and Camo came through one and two near chokers, but it was a different line than the cars and trucks would run the rest of the weekend. Near race mile eight, Jordan Graham was leading the team hooligan open class of his Ducati Scrambler. He was headed through the open desert towards Hard Rock Mountain. Meanwhile, Rusty Butcher powered through chokers on his modified Harley to round out the race pack. Up ahead, his fellow motorhead Mikey Virus was mobbing down a straightaway. 
Number 46 Dalton Shirey was through pit A and charging into the Fox Proving Grounds minutes later. 37 David Camo was right on his tail, mere seconds off his bumper. Joseph Lawson and Jack Simpson came flying through next in third and fourth, followed by 851 Zane Roberts, who was now looking for a place to pass from fifth. Meanwhile, rider Tara Geiger, out of Bend, Oregon, was dominating the pro women's class thus far. Just past race mile 26 near spectator area one, Zane Roberts came out of nowhere and passed both Joseph and Jack and flew into third place. Minutes later, the three leaders were still rocketing down course one, two, and three. For Shirey and Roberts, it was a familiar position as they raced together in the Hare and Hound series. Camo, meanwhile, has a long list of wins, including being a three-time SCORE Baja class champion. Meanwhile, back at Hard Rock Mountain, all hell was breaking loose. More than 25 bikes in 10 different classes were all mashed together on a sketchy single-track mountain pass. Back up front near the Joshua Tree Highway, Dalton Shirey continued to lead the pro open class at an impressive pace. David Camo was doing his best to catch up to the young leader, but the chewed up desert race course wasn't helping. Zane Roberts continued to hold down third place as he raced towards the main pit. Cole Knatzer, meanwhile, was still out front in the Pro 250 class. He was sitting 11th on course overall. Dalton and David went bar to bar on the start of lap two. Dalton got the edge and moved out front as Zane Roberts came screaming past next in third still. Minutes later, Dalton shot across warp zone as tucked as possible. He was tracking at over 100 miles per hour. David Camo was still on his tail. The two had opened up a sizable lead on the chase back. Dalton was floating across the large whoops that would terrorize the cars and trucks later that afternoon and weekend. And Jordan Graham was still out front in Team Hooligan Open on his Fast House Scrambler Ducati. He was passing dirt bikes left and right and dominating the field. Dalton Shirey hit rockets for the second and final time. Once again, showcasing his speed. David Camo came through next, outrunning an R-44 helicopter while chasing Dalton. After more than three grueling hours and nearly 200 miles of off-road hell, Dalton Shirey flew across the finish line in first place. The 22-year-old from Costa Mesa put on an impressive performance. Uh, it feels amazing, first time racing it. I'm glad I got to pull off a W for this first time. The truck course is definitely really chewed up. Like, they, those trucks freaking mess stuff up. But when we got off on our, like, the motorcycle sections and I could through the sand washes, man, it was so much fun. It was, I couldn't enjoy it anymore. In the Pro 250 class, Cole Knatzer from Napa, California, took the win by about five minutes. And Tara Geiger held on to the pro women's win in the 86cc Open Division. Logan Freeman would end up on top of the box in the Team Open Expert class. And Dennis Green took home the win in the Open Am group. Jordan Graham bagged the Team Hooligan Open on his Ducati. And in the Hooligan Enduro class, it was Harley Davidson rider Mikey Virus who was victorious. And in the Dual Sport Division, James Hill took the win on his Honda. Lake Elsinore, California. Here's a look at all of the winners for the 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 motorcycle race. Off-road racing is a multi-generational family industry, and all that starts with the kids. On Friday, nearly 50 kids in four classes lined up and went door to door. In the 170 class, Chase Mankin edged out George Yamosis. Then in the Youth 250 class, Chase Carr would land on top of the box. In the 570 class, it was TJ Seawers who took home the gold. And finally, in the Youth 1000 class, three-time UTV world champion Dallas Gonzalez went door-to-door -door with Mickey Kelly, Cadence Cowan, and Jacob Peter. 
Dallas took home the win by a mere second. Here's a look at all the youth UTV race results. On Saturday, it was the Moto Kids. In the big wheel class, Seth Sidora raced out ahead of the pack and finished a full seven minutes ahead of second place. In the mini class, Jet Lessing and David Gilman went toe to toe for eight laps, but it was Lessing who ended up on top. Caleb Tate dominated junior mini, and Malcolm Pearson from Nevada did the same in micro mini. Here's a look at all the youth moto race results. Congratulations to all the nearly 100 youth racers who came to participate in the first annual Mini Mint 400, and to their parents and families who dedicated countless hours for travel and practice. The Mini Mint 400 was a resounding success, and it will be back in 2021. Friday, 1 p.m. On the start line for this year's limited race, 24 classes, all mashed together with one common goal, go hard and win. Right now we're at the legendary Mint 400, we're in Prim, Nevada, and we're about to start the most brutal United States desert race all year. And then the teams hop into their cars and lined up to race. Minutes later, the lights went green, and Class 5 racers Dustin Grabowski and Brandon Williams took center stage as the crowd went wild. Seconds later, 913 Brandon Sims took off against 903 Elliot Watson. Then 901 Mitch Guthrie took off next to Bernie Gomez. In all, 104 UTVs left the start line. They were followed by Trophy Light, Jeep Speed, 1450, Vintage Racers, and more. Up in the lead pack, 2016 Mint 400 Pro Turbo Champion Brandon Sims was in the lead at race mile nine. He was right behind the Class 5 and overall leader, Dustin Grabowski. Back in the chase pack, Mitch Guthrie had been running strong in fourth overall, when suddenly he broke a rear axle and was forced to pull over. Brandon Sims hit the Fox Proving Grounds for the first time. Greg Scanlon was still right on his tail. They were followed closely by Jacob Carver, who sat in third. The naturally aspirated UTV class hit the Fox Proving Grounds, and it was number 1938, Houston, out front. He was followed by 1957 Joe and Austin Bolton. Meanwhile, 35-year-old Adrian Oriana had started in seventh and had already moved up to third physically. In the Pro Turbo lead pack, Sims was still cruising out front near the shooting range. He was two miles ahead of Craig Scanlon and three miles ahead of third place Jacob Carver. Back in the NA class, number 1957 Joe Bolton had moved out front and was running strong with Oriana less than a mile off his bumper. In the 1450 class, Chris Eisenhower was still out front as he headed into the Fox Proving Grounds. Kevin Thompson, meanwhile, was charging hard after Eisenhower and making up time fast. In the Pro Turbo Chase Pack near Race Mile 67, Justin Smith got around Brett Serapis and moved into fourth. Near Race Mile 76, Craig Scanlon was forced to pull over with a left rear flat, and Jacob Carver got past him to move into second place. Meanwhile, back in the mid-pack, Dustin Jones, who had started nearly dead last in his class, suddenly appeared on the scoreboard in the top 10 on corrected time. At race mile 46, Eisenhower was still out front in the 1450 pack, but Kevin Thompson was right on his bumper. The pro UTV racers were through the main pit and back on course. Brandon Sims was still running hard out front. Sims now had a six-mile lead over Carver and Smith, who were still within striking distance. Mitch Guthrie, meanwhile, had quietly climbed his way back to sixth place, and Dustin Jones, who started nearly dead last, was now in 12th place physically and in the top five on corrected time. For the next 45 minutes, Sims continued to lead on lap two, with Jacob Carver in second, Justin Smith in third, physically. Meanwhile, Scanlon ripped past Gomez near race mile 59 and moved into eighth, physically, in the pro turbo class. Gordon, 
Wells, and Oriana were all neck and neck in the NA class through Race Mile 46. Up ahead, the Pro Turbo race leaders hit the pits. Sims remained out front with a commanding lead. Carver was still in second, but as he pulled into the pit, Smith passed him and did not stop. For the next four hours, the entire field of limited racers battled deep into the night. In the end, though, it was former Mint 400 and UTV world champion Brandon Sims, racing for Factory Polaris out of Prescott, Arizona, who won the overall limited race and Pro Turbo UTV class. It was Brandon's second Mint 400 victory. In the unlimited UTV class, Travis Zollinger took the win with a time of 9.42, and Adrian Oriana won the naturally aspirated UTV race with a time of 9.47. Young Jack Oligas won the rally UTV race in seven hours and 49 minutes. Meanwhile, Kevin Thompson took the win in the 1450 class, Here's a look at all of the winners for the 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 Limited Race. While the winning race team celebrated, there were still dozens of vehicles on the race course who would battle late into the night. The 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 on ESPN2, brought to you by BF Goodrich Tires, must-have equipment for the serious off-road enthusiast, and Method Race Wheels, lighter, stronger, faster. And Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And Harley-Davidson, built to endure, designed to explore. Saturday, March 7th, 11 a.m. 25 unlimited trucks, 20 Baja trucks, 20 class 10 cars, and a handful of 6,100, seven and ultra four trucks all lined up for the second annual grid walk at the official mint 400 prim valley start finish line fans family and friends were all able to wish their favorite drivers good luck get their autographs and take photos while teams did a last minute equipment check it's kind of a mind game out there how hard do you push when do you push is someone else going to push early is Minzy's going to push early you know, he, you know, we're starting side by side. He could get us off the start, but it is what it is. It's a long race, and we're not going to sweat it if he does. Rhiannon Camo performed the national anthem as the UNLV Air Force ROTC Color Guard presented the Stars and Stripes. Then, minutes later, the team strapped back in and rolled up to the start line. Harley Lettner sat at the front of the pack in his number 70 Concrete Motorsports Unlimited truck. He had earned the coveted pole position for being the fastest qualifier. Nearly 25,000 off-road race fans were on hand, all excited to see the race action. The lights went green and Harley was off. He quickly ripped through the infield section, making quick work of the jumps and turns, and began to head out towards the desert. The 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 Unlimited Race was underway. Up next, it was two-time Mint 400 champ Bryce Menzies against 25-year-old Kyle Jurgensen, Oak Hills, California. One minute later, it was Luke McMillan in white on the inside against Dale Dondell in black on the outside. Dale rocketed out of the start gate and pulled ahead of Luke. Two by two, the fire-breathing unlimited trucks each took their turn, firing off the start line. The handful of Class 1 racers on hand this year launched off to start next. Then in the Baja truck class, Joe Brain and Justin Blower went side by side through the infield. But there were 24 more seasoned Baja truck racers behind them both, all of whom came roaring down the course next, two by two. Chase Warren led the Class 10 cars off the start, next to 6100 racer Mitch Armstrong. There were nearly 20 Class 10 cars behind Chase, all competing this year for $35,000 in cash and prizes in the Lumacraft Class 10 shootout. Over 100 of the toughest and most battle-hardened off-road warriors left the start line this year, but less than half of them would finish the race. The Mint 400 race course was already battered and beaten from 
Friday's racing, and it was about to get a lot worse. Up ahead in the lead, Harley Lettner was running strong out front. He was at race mile 16, flying across the lake bed dubbed Warp Zone. He was pushing well over 100 miles an hour, and had managed to put a three-mile gap between himself and second place Bryce Menzies. Bryce, meanwhile, was leading a chase pack made up of Kyle Jurgensen, Dale Dondell, Luke McMillan, Justin Lofton, Ryan Arciero, and Rob McCachran, all in his rearview mirror. Suddenly, as he passed race mile 18, he was forced to pull over. He sustained a rear left flat. As his co-driver leapt from the truck and dove into the tire change, they were passed by the four trucks right behind them, one by one. It was a disappointing twist for Team Menzies so early in the race. Fifteen minutes later, race leader Harley Lettner drove through pit A. He was still ahead of Kyle Jurgensen, but his motor was running hot. The team decided to remove the hood quickly to see if they could increase airflow to the engine. And he was back on course in second. Back up front, Lettner ripped through the Fox Proving Grounds at race mile 33. This area of the course is known for being one of the most destructive and punishing in the sport. Harley made it look easy. Jurgensen was still in second, but Dondell was right on his tail now, and Luke McMillan was beginning to turn on as well. 6134 Mike Neff, meanwhile, was making his way up front early on. He was leading the 6100 class, but was aggressively charging after the Baja trucks. At race mile 10, he let number 272 Joshua Steele know he was passing with a little love tap. Up ahead, mid-400 champ Justin Lofton sustained a flat near race mile 43 and was forced to pull over. He was passed by four trucks on course and dropped back to ninth. Back in the Baja truck class, Joe Brain tapped Blower's bumper and then made the pass. Meanwhile, the class 10 group was being led by Chase Warren into the Fox Proving Grounds. The lighter chassis of the Class 10 cars made for a faster and less treacherous ride through this section. Most would skip across the top of the deep ruts and g -outs. Chase Warren looked strong and fast as he ripped through the proving grounds and by spectator area one. The group went wild as Warren flogged it at top speed. He was miles ahead. Over 4,000 spectators were on hand in the sold-out remote spectator areas this year, cheering on their favorite teams. In the shooting range near race mile 47, Chad Cummings was sitting in third place in class one trying to catch Jay Reichert. But he had the fifth place Baja truck of Householder Motorsports screaming down his backside. The class 10 chase pack of McMullen, Fox and Brigman continued to try to reel in Warren towards the end of lap one, but they were now hitting slower lap traffic. Warren had a huge advantage at the moment. If they were going to catch him, they were going to need to make a move soon because Warren was in danger of running away with it. It's the end of lap one at the 52nd annual Great American Off-Road Race. And the premier truck class known as the Unlimited Trucks are in the main pit for fuel, tires, and in some cases, spare parts. Harley Lettner started the race and led the entire first lap with clean air. He had a massive lead on the other teams as he came into the main pit. Dale Dondell, meanwhile, passed Kyle Jurgensen in pits and took on fuel. The two had been battling for second place for most of lap one. Dale hoped to get back out of his pit and stay ahead of Kyle, but Jurgensen was in and out in seconds and slid into second place again. To make matters worse, Luke McMillan, Bryce Menzies, Ryan Arciero, and Rob Mack all drove past Dondell while his crew struggled to button him up. It was a tough turn of events for Dale, who had run hard in third all morning. Justin Lofton was having a rough day so far as well. He pitted 14th after a difficult start and some flat tires early on in lap one. Meanwhile, the Baja trucks hit the pits and Householder and Williams came rolling in. 
Williams' pit crew had to do some creative repairs on his front bumper. He sat in fourth physically. Lettner led the race out on lap two through the custom Tony Vanillo designed race course. There were tens of thousands of off-road race fans on hand this year. Minutes later, Kyle Jurgensen came through in his Brentville Unlimited truck. Luke McMillan came through next and third. Then it was Bryce Menzies and Ryan Arciero. Up ahead, Lettner was pushing 90 miles an hour into chokers. Having three feet of suspension travel helped keep him on the rubber coming into the sharp turn. Seconds later, Jurgensen took an outside line while McMillan drifted wide, but tucked it back in. Bryce Menzies, meanwhile, had re-emerged in fourth place and was putting his all-wheel drive truck to work. Cody Parkhouse came sliding through next in first place in Class 1. It was another dominating performance by Parkhouse Motorsports so far this year. Several minutes later, Lettner pulled into pit A at race mile 32. He took on fuel and tires in a matter of seconds and was back out. Ripping his way through the Fox Proving Grounds a second time. Jurgensen, McMillan, and Menzies came through one after another minutes later. Ten miles down course, there was suddenly a disappointing setback for Kyle Jurgensen. He was forced to pull over at race mile 48, Luke McMillan, and got past him. But seconds later, Bryce had to pull over too. Both lost precious time making repairs. Within 15 minutes, Ryan Arciero caught and passed Jurgensen was now right on Menzies' bumper as he got going again. Up ahead, Lettner ripped across rockets at 140 miles per hour, but was continuing to have overheating issues. Luke McMillan was now in second place physically eight miles behind Harley. It was time to drop the hammer. Bryce came by next and third and looked lightning fast, but Ryan Arciero was on his tail now, hoping for some clean air or a mistake by the young driver. Jurgensen was back in the game, but his truck was looking bruised and battered. Rafael Navarro made his way through the Fox Proving Grounds next. He was now eighth on course behind the Baja truck leader, Joe Brink. Several minutes later, there was a shakeup in Class 10. Number 1020, Connor McMullen got around Chase Warren at race mile 30 and moved out into the lead. He came through the Fox Proving Grounds minutes later in a dominating position, but there was still a lot of racing left. The 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 on ESPN2. Brought to you by Fox Shocks. Redefine your ride dynamics. And NGK Spark Plugs, the ignition specialist. And Assault Industries the leader in high-performance off-road products. And Onyx Off-Road, essential maps for public lands and open trails. It's the end of lap two of the Great American Off-Road Race. And Luke McMillan, who had moved into second place, was suddenly forced to pull over. While Luke and his co-driver struggled to make the repair, two-time Mint 400 champion Bryce Menzies passed the stranded truck. It would take several more minutes for Luke to return to the race he dropped back to fifth. Minutes later, Bryce came into the main pit with a rear flat. The puncture had slowed him down considerably after passing McMillan. Luke drove past him seconds later, and after a very brief pit stop, he moved ahead of Bryce, back into fourth place. Number 88, Christian Serapis, meanwhile, had emerged in sixth place in his White Claw Unlimited truck at the end of lap two. Harley Lettner once again led the pack through the starting gate and out on lap three. He was now followed by Ryan Arciero in the number 32 Levi's truck. Luke McMillan was in third after passing Bryce Menzies in the pit and sat in fourth overall. And Kyle Jurgensen was still in the hunt in fifth place. Lettner hit the warp zone for the third time and once again looked unstoppable. He was clocking well over 150 miles an hour and was 13 miles ahead of the next truck on course. Arciero remained on his six, however. One by one, Harley, Ryan, 
Luke and Bryce smashed their way through chokers one last time during the daylight. Back at race mile 17, Christian Serapis was forced to pull over coming off warp zone. Seconds later, he was passed by Rob Mack, who moved up to sixth place. Tim Herps, meanwhile, emerged from the dust, having passed Serapis as well. He was now in seventh, and also a danger to the lead pack on corrected time. Up ahead at pit A, Harley Lettner swapped driving duties with his teammate and team owner, Kevin Thompson. Kevin came firing through the proving grounds, but he had slowed his pace some. Their motor was now hurting badly from overheating. Arciero was a few miles off his bumper and running him down. Luke McMillan came through next and third, but Bryce was right on his tail. Bryce was in a newer all-wheel drive truck with a bit more power than Luke's, but that didn't necessarily mean Luke was outmatched. Back up in the shooting range, Bryce sustained another flat and was forced to pull over again. He was passed by Kyle Jurgensen and he lost about two minutes dropping back into fifth. Up front, Kevin Thompson was still in the lead, but Arciero was catching up fast. To make matters worse, it was about to go critical. Thompson and Lettner had driven the motor so hard, it was literally beginning to melt down. There was simply nothing left in the old girl, and so reluctantly, Kevin radioed the team and pulled off the course. It was a bittersweet moment for the team, which dominated time trials, won the 1450 class on Friday, and led all 263 miles of the race thus far. In their shadow, a hungry Ryan Arciero pounced at the chance to take the lead, and he rocketed out front. He did not stop in pit B, and continued charging ahead. Luke McMillan, meanwhile, stopped in pit B for several minutes, but was able to get going again and stay in front of Kyle Jurgensen, who was now in third a few minutes ahead of Menzies. Back in the Baja truck class, Terry and Adam Householder had taken a commanding lead. At the end of lap two, they moved out in front and led all of lap three thus far. They were now four miles ahead of Justin Blauer in second, while Travis Williams and Brad Lovell held down third and fourth. Up at pit B, Bryce stopped, took on fuel and fresh spare tires, and was back out, still ahead of Rob Mack. Arciero led the race for the next 30 miles uncontested. He remained several miles ahead of Luke McMillan, Kyle Jurgensen, and Bryce Menzies. Bryce, meanwhile, was trying to reel in Jurgensen before getting to Prim at the end of lap three. But for nearly 20 miles, Kyle held Bryce off. Ryan Arciero came flying towards the official Mint 400 Prim Valley start-finish line. Luke, Kyle, and Bryce remained behind him. He pulled into his pit and the crew mounted his light bar in a matter of seconds. He was given gas and a fresh set of rear tires. Behind him, Luke McMillan closed the gap and then pulled into his own pit for much of the same. Bryce Menzies, meanwhile, opted not to pit. The two-time mid-400 champ now sat in third place. It's the final lap of the most challenging off-road race in America, and the race course is strewn with broken and battered vehicles everywhere. Ryan Arciero in the 32 Levi's Unlimited truck assumed the lead on lap three after Kevin Thompson and Harley Lettner melted their motor. Right behind him sat Luke McMillan, who'd been patiently running in the top five all day. He looked poised and fresh as he ripped through the infield one last time. But behind him sat two-time Mint 400 champion and Las Vegas native Bryce Menzies. Could Ryan and Luke hold the champ off for a hundred more miles? Then there was the wild card of the race, Kyle Jurgensen. He was running fourth and still applying pressure forward. Minutes later, the leaders hit chokers for the final time. Arciero made navigating 36-inch ruts look easy, as did Luke, who seemed to float across them. 
But Bryce was on a mission to reel the leaders in, and this was a good spot to do it. He turned the corner and appeared to be a mere 100 yards off Luke's bumper. Suddenly, there was a shakeup in the lead pack. After qualifying second and running in the top five all day, Kyle Jurgensen sustained a mechanical failure and was forced to pull over. It was a very tough break for the team after demonstrating such a dominant performance. Meanwhile, our Sierra was hitting some lap traffic near race mile 29. Luke and Bryce were both on his tail and seconds apart. Luke passed Rafael Navarro, who was still on lap three and running strong. Ryan drove through an eerily empty pit A with the chase pack in sight. Then he gassed it headlong into the Fox Proving Grounds. Seconds later, Luke McMillan came through. He was exercising patience normally seen in much older racers, staying just outside Ryan's dust. Minutes later, they raced into the quarry and spectator area too, a short course style section of the track with lots of quick turns and elevation changes. Minutes later, Ryan came firing across rockets at breakneck speed near race mile 63. Luke was right behind him and came by seconds later, followed by Bryce Menzies, who was now pushing up very close to Luke's bumper. All three racers came driving through pit B, but none of them stopped. There was no time for fuel or tires. Then, up ahead, there was another major shakeup in the lead pack. Ryan Arciero, who'd been running out front for over 100 miles, suddenly lost his left rear tire and was forced to pull over. Within a matter of seconds, Luke McMillan came screaming past the stranded team and moved into first place. And a minute later, Bryce Menzies did the same. Up ahead, Luke McMillan remained focused and poised, but with two-time mid-400 champion Bryce Menzies breathing down his neck. Bryce was about two miles behind him with lap traffic in between. Luke knew Bryce was capable of catching him. The last 11 miles seemed to drag on forever, but Luke finally hit the home stretch. He came flying across the finish line with a time of six hours, 49 minutes, 52 seconds, over eight minutes ahead of second place Bryce Menzies. 27-year-old Luke McMillan of McMillan Racing from El Cajon, California, driving for four-wheel parts, BF Goodrich tires, Fox shocks, and Method race wheels, celebrated with his co-driver Jason Duncan and the entire McMillan race team as they were presented with a $10,000 check from Fox shocks and a $25,000 check from BF Goodrich tires, in addition to the $15,000 overall Mint 400 perks. This was Luke's first Mint 400 victory and was a fitting tribute to his father, Mark, who won the race himself back in 1988. This truck's been a gremlin of mine for six or so years that we've owned it. I never gave up on it. My team never gave up, gave up on it. And uh, there was definitely a lot of long nights and days where we thought about it, but there's no way. So just, just get this 83 truck up there. You know what this truck means to me, and I, I pour my heart and soul into it. So just, just to get put this truck on the top of the box and have my family here means everything. Bryce Menzies would have to settle for second place this year. It was a very respectable performance for the Las Vegas native after pushing hard all day. And Ryan Arciero took third after leading for much of lap three and four. It was a bittersweet podium finish for the seasoned racer, but a fantastic showcase nonetheless. Then the team of Parkhouse Motorsports came flying across, first in class one. They would end up 90 minutes ahead of second place Jay Riker. In the Baja truck class, another father and son team, Terry and Adam Householder, came across the finish line first. In the Alumacraft Class 10 shootout, 34-year-old Preston Brigman from Highland, Utah, took home first place. He finished several minutes ahead of Brett Fox and Connor McMullen, who took third. The three men would split 35,000 in cash, all thanks to Alumacraft, Pro-Am, competitive medals, CDR performance products, and Redline performance. Mike Neff would end up finishing first in the 6100 class, and Randy Merritt took home the win in class seven. 
Here's a look at the top finishers from every class for the 2020 BF Goodrich Tires Mint 400 Unlimited Race. While the Unlimited class winners and their teams began to celebrate and recover, there were many teams still on course struggling to complete their races. It would be several hours before many of these drivers would see the finish line, but they refused to give up. Just finishing the mint is an incredible accomplishment, and this year was by far one of the most difficult on record. Of the 500 plus race teams that left the start line, only 47% finished the grueling marathon. The Great American Off-Road Race will return to Las Vegas March 3rd through 7th in 2021. Visit themint400.com or facebook.com slash themint400 for complete details.